So they're under Stalin's orders. It's going to be close. Quick start needed. Italians get the better one. It's out in lane number three. The British have slightly dropped in lane number four as they now sort of wind it up. There go the South Africans. Bottom right of your picture. It's Denmark in lane number one. Switzerland in two. Italy in three. Great Britain in four. The world champions. And Australia are in five. And South Africa are in lane number six. Expect a big roar from the crowd as we get towards the closing stages for the Swiss team in lane number two. And the British now also heading out strong. But up there in lane number one, Denmark. Denmark having the better of the first 250 metres. Okay, Denmark, always look out for Denmark. They've got the great uh, Eskil Edmondson, who's a, a, a two-time gold medalist at the Olympics. Uh, he's come back for a, a, another crack at uh, uh, for London 2012. And he is the Iron Man of Danish rowing. He just is such a hard racer. And he always takes his crew out super hard and then they stay at a very high rate of uh, striking number of strokes per minute right the way through the uh, uh, the race and that's how they train so just watch them watch them as they move now into the lead but switzerland doing very well matching them there switzerland now taking on the lead as the crews start to come into their race rhythm the rate that will sustain them through the middle 1000 meters of this two kilometer course and the british looking pretty relaxed there in lane number four just had a little look there of uh, Paul Matic. So through the 500 meter mark. As you can see, nothing in that. If you look down there, there, was, there were really just inches, inches between the crews. But Great Britain, a little bit of a lie back that they have there. They've, they've taken that on from the uh, Canadians, but they do really finish out the strokes. And that stands them in very good stead through the middle of the course uh, for when they have to really sprint at the end. But the key for them will be, can they sprint with a new man in the boat uh, who has to pick up that rhythm, but he's doing very, very well. The British actually, just looking across those uh, crews, the British look the better in terms of rhythm and steadiness as we look there at uh, uh, Switzerland. They just look very much out there, connecting the catch down, getting the blade in the water and really moving on. Look, there's a lot of water flying off the Swiss boat here. Feeling of that they're just really kind of right on the cusp of it, right on the edge, you know, riding their luck a little bit, taking it all in and around to here. Switzerland were eighth at the World Championships in this event last year. So, you know, stepped up, yes, but it's slightly riding it with the quality of the field around them. Well, the British forward looks very, very relaxed. Um, uh, Chris Bartley's going to have to have a fight probably to get back into the boat because stroking the boat, uh, uh, Rob Williams is doing a very good job. Very difficult to move down the boat, take over the stroke seat and then lead a crew um, uh, with only really two or three weeks of, uh, of preparation. So he's doing extremely well there and the big key now is how they deal with the second half. So we said it'll be nothing in it in this race. It's tight and indeed at the halfway mark very little in between all six bows fabulous there and australia have actually kicked back on south africans leading slightly there nothing in it amongst all of these bows but australia who had a bit of a sort of a, you know, into the second 500 slowed down a little bit they've now found some speed again here i mean this is just the most exciting race out there you really can't afford a single mistake on any single stroke here Great Britain just slipped into the lead there. I don't quite know why the, uh, the, the little chart there on the left showed them in fifth place, because they were well up with the leaders. But they've just eased into the front there. Now the key is, how, can they sustain that, and can they turn it on in the last 500 when everybody will attack them? So down the boat, Richard Chambers in the bow seat from Leander Club. His brother, Peter Chambers from Oxford Brooks Boat Club, Paul Matic from Leander Club, and Rob Williams from London Rowing Club here. Really good, tight-knit group again as we're just watching Switzerland in lane number two Great Britain coached by Rob Morgan between them you know really good experience here and they trust in each other and that trust is now going to be called for as we get towards the business end through 1250 meters 750 to go in this final the men's lightweight consulate four here remember the crew average maximum individual cannot exceed 72 and a half kilograms the crew average cannot exceed 70 kilograms uh, watch just watch Denmark top of the picture as they really start to motor fast fast finish finishers and uh, they're just there wearing the yellow vest so they're uh, World Cup leaders at the moment half a length up three quarters to half a length from Great Britain over Australia who have again found more speed but even they will know Great Britain will know you cannot discount a single boat at this stage in the race the British now are right up there almost on the edge of a sprint they've probably got one more sprint level to go here all boats up at 39 
40 strokes per minute and still Switzerland in amongst it all hanging on for dear life outside them in lane at number one Denmark Denmark again will also push on hard Switzerland at 40 strokes a minute Great Britain now just moving up through through the 39 strokes a minute still a little bit more to go they know that the last 250 they'll have to go but look four years younger Pete Chambers than his older uh, than his older brother sitting there just slotted in and it's really sweet wonderful display of cool calm heads under pressure coming from the British world champions in lane at number four and now again they are being attacked and here we are in the dangerous part of the race we have 200 meters remaining surely they've done enough to hang on but look at the field every single one of them is coming right back with Great Britain out there in front they're still moving away this has been beautifully timed they were so calm in the middle of the race they've over over moved it up now and now in this last 150 meters they are shifting inside 10 strokes you can count them in the British crew have done enough but the Australians attack harder and here come the Italians and the Danes at the top but it'll be Great Britain on the line it is gold for Great Britain it is silver for Italy and we'll wait for the full confirmation of the bronze medal but wasn't that a spectacular race and once and for all again Great Britain just keep cool calm heads and that's what it all, all means brothers brotherly love isn't that? that's great celebration but how what a triumph for Peter Chambers to be a, a winner here and as I say Chris Bartley who's injured will struggle to get back into that because that was a very sweet lineup it worked very well and all credit to uh, to um, uh, uh, Rob's Rob Williams in the stroke seat he did a great job